In this lesson, we're going to talk about the role and function of the video board in your PC system. Now, the video board has a very special job. Basically, it's an interface between the motherboard and your monitor. And as such, its job is to take the data that's coming off from the motherboard, convert it into a format that can be displayed on the monitor. Depending on the type of monitor you're using, we might need to take that digital motherboard data and convert it into analog data. Or we might need to take that digital data from the motherboard and change it into a type of digital data that a digital monitor can understand. Let's take a look at the components that make up a typical video board. The first component is the BIOS. Now, when I say BIOS, I'm not talking about the BIOS on the motherboard. The video board has its own BIOS that when the system's booted up, inserts itself so that the CPU can address the video board and send data to it. The second component is the video RAM. Just like, as with the BIOS, when I say RAM here, I'm not talking about the motherboard RAM. The video board has its own RAM. Now, on older video boards, this was made up of a special type of RAM chip called VRAM. And sometimes, a different type of memory chip is used called WRAM. These aren't used anymore. On newer boards, we use SGRAM or even DDR SDRAM chips, the same types of chips that are used on the memory sticks used in a newer system, DDR RAM. Now, in addition to the BIOS and the RAM, we also have on the video board the controller circuitry. Now, the controller circuitry is also called the RAM DAC. RAM DAC stands for Random Access Memory Digital to Analog Converter. The RAM DAC is actually a CPU, a small microprocessor, that's built right into the video adapter board itself. It converts the digital signal that the video board receives from the motherboard into an analog signal that can be sent to an analog VGA monitor. Now it combines a small SRAM chip containing a color table with three digital to analog converters. It changes the digital image data coming from the motherboard into red, green, and blue analog signals that are sent to each of the three electron guns in your typical analog monitor. Now, when selecting a particular video board to work in your PC system, there are a number of different considerations that you should keep in mind. The first of which is the bus type. Do you want to use an AGP, a PCI, or a PCI Express card? Whatever type you choose, your motherboard needs to support it. I'm going to throw in a little caveat here. Occasionally, you might be tempted to use a PCI board. They're very inexpensive. If at all possible, use an AGP board, or better yet, if your motherboard supports it, a PCI Express board. A PCI video boards are good, but in comparison with AGP and PCI Express, there is no comparison. Okay? AGP and PCI Express are so much faster, it's almost not worth going with an older PCI video board. Another thing you need to keep in mind is the resolution support. That's all a function of the memory that's installed on the board. The larger resolution you want to use, the more memory you have to have installed on the board. You also want to take into consideration the monitor interface. Currently, there are two different monitor interfaces you can choose from, one of which is very widely implemented, and the other one is a little bit newer and not quite as widely implemented. The first one is just your standard VGA. Now, a VGA monitor is an analog monitor. Hence, the port coming off your video board for VGA is an analog port. It uses that RAM DAC we talked about before to convert digital motherboard data into analog signals that a VGA monitor can use. By far and away, this is the most widely implemented. Most of the monitors that you will probably work with use a standard VGA type of interface. However, there are some newer monitors available called DVI. DVI stands for Digital Visual Interface. 
It's a digital video interface standard that was created by the Digital Display Working Group. It can accommodate both analog VGA signals as well as digital signals. To do this, the DVI interface on a video board actually has two different ports. The first port is designed to support standard VGA monitors. The second port is designed to support digital monitors. DVI handles bandwidths that are in excess of about 160 megahertz, and therefore it can support very high resolution displays such as UXGA or HDTV. And this brings up an important point. On most motherboards that you purchase today, you'll probably find an integrated uh, video interface. These work fine, there's nothing really wrong with them. However, they have one drawback, and that is the fact that instead of using their own memory, dedicated memory for video functions, what they do is they steal some of your system memory. Because remember, most of our newer motherboards use DDR memory, the same type of memory chips that are used on video boards. Somebody got the wise idea and said, hmm, why not just make a video interface that uses some of the system memory so we don't have to integrate our own memory on the system and save a little money. It works. You can steal some of that memory, especially if you have a system that has a lot of RAM to spare. Say if you have 512 or a gigabyte of RAM in your system, you might be thinking, well, hey, yeah, I'll let it steal 64 megabytes of RAM for video. It works. The problem is, is that it's not as fast as a video board that has its own dedicated memory. If you're not concerned about video performance, go ahead and use the integrated video adapter. However, if you're serious about your video performance, if you're into gaming or multimedia creation, then you probably want to go into the BIOS and disable the onboard video adapter and install an AGP or PCI Express card into the expansion slot on the motherboard. The performance will be a lot better. With that, let's talk about dual monitor support. Now, back in the old days, you could only have a dual monitor on a Macintosh system, and the Macintosh folks taunted the PC folks mercilessly about that fact. Therefore, the PC folks said, hey, we got to be able to do this too, because it's really sweet. Essentially, what you do is you take two monitors, and you connect them to the same PC system, and by doing that, you spread your Windows or Linux desktop across both monitors essentially gives you a huge work area to work with. If you work with multimedia applications or desktop publishing applications, this is a real benefit. It's great to have your desktop publishing application open over here and your graphics editing software open over here and be able to go back and forth between these two by simply moving your mouse. As far as your PC is concerned, these two monitors comprise a single desktop. Works great. I personally use this in my office because I do a lot of desktop publishing. I need two monitors. I would die if I just had one. Well, how do you implement this type of system? There's two different options. Option one is to actually install two video boards in your PC system. Now the first board, this is your motherboard, the first board has to be and AGP card. The second board, however, remember with AGP, we can only have one expansion slot in the bus. Therefore, the second card has to be a PCI card. And you connect one monitor to one of the video interfaces, and you connect the other monitor to the second interface. Now, this is an important point right here. I have tried this myself, not thinking, and I've watched other people do it too. Suppose you have a motherboard that has an integrated video adapter, and it has an AGP slot. You think, wow, this is great. I'm going to put a high-end AGP card in here and use my onboard video and my AGP card and have a slick dual monitor system. It doesn't work. It goes back again to the fact that you can't have two AGP cards. The built-in monitor is an AGP card. The expansion slot is an AGP slot. Therefore, you can't use your AGP card and your built-in video adapter at the same time. If you want to work in that type of situation, you need to use an AGP card and a PCI video card. The good news is that these are really inexpensive. These are a dime a dozen. You can purchase used one of those for two or three bucks. However, be aware that there's one issue with PCI video boards, and that is that their built-in BIOS, remember every video board has a built-in BIOS, it's very aggressive. In fact, on most systems, 
the PCI BIOS will take over over the AGP video BIOS. And when that happens, this second board is not displayed. You can't use the second monitor. What you need to do is to purchase a PCI card that allows you to disable its onboard BIOS. By doing that, the AGP BIOS can take over and it's compatible. It can recognize this second PCI card and work with the operating system and the motherboard BIOS to provide two monitors. Okay, so that's option number one. The second option is to buy a dual monitor video board. This is a little bit easier solution. This first solution works really well, but it's kind of tricky. You have to have just the right PCI card. With a dual monitor board, you install a single card in an AGP slot or PCI Express slot. It has two video ports installed on it. So you connect one monitor to one port, the second monitor to the second port, and you have your dual monitor solution that way as well. Once you have your boards configured and your monitors hooked up, then you need to go into the operating system that you're using and configure it to use both monitors. Windows 98 Second Edition, Windows 2000, Windows XP all support dual monitors. In addition, Linux also supports dual monitors. When you're shopping for a video card, you also need to keep in mind the refresh rate associated with the monitor you're going to use. Now, Back in the old days, this was a really sticky issue. Today, it's not quite as big a deal, but the, it's still a factor. The reason is, is because the monitor runs at a specific refresh rate. In other words, how fast can it redraw screens on the monitor screen? Your video board must support the particular refresh rate that the monitor runs at. Now, back in the old days, this was a real issue because monitors ran at a single refresh rate. Therefore, you had to match up your video board with the monitor. They both had to run at the same rate. And this got to be a problem because sometimes it was hard to figure out what the refresh rate was. Therefore, you might be using a board that pushed the monitor too fast. It was easy to do because the monitor would try to keep up with the video board and it would work for a while, but it would slowly or quickly, depending on how fast you were pushing it, degrade the monitor. I actually had this happen once. I had an old system that had a a video board that ran at too high of a refresh rate and I didn't realize that. I plugged it into a single rate monitor. It ran great for about two months and then one day I went into the office and I started smelling smoke and sure enough that monitor was arcing and sparking and smoking. The problem was was that my video board was pushing the monitor too quickly. Now today it's not as big an issue because our video boards are usually multi-sync video boards meaning they support multiple rate uh, refresh rates. In addition, our monitors are usually multi-sync monitors, meaning they also support multiple refresh rates. Usually, because we're dealing with multiple re refresh rates, the, the monitor and the video board can agree on a good refresh rate. However, if you want to run at a really high refresh rate, and which, by the way, gives you the sharpest picture and the best video performance, be sure that the monitor and the card you're using will both support that high rate. In addition, there's a variety of other features you might want to be, take into consideration when you're selecting a video board. For instance, do you want to be able to bring NTSC video, in other words, a TV signal, into the system? And do you want to be able to output your VGA signal as an NTSC or video signal? Those are big considerations for some folks. For instance, if you're dealing with a laptop or a notebook system and you want to be able to um, display presentations using a, an NTSC uh, video projector or television set, then you probably want a video out feature on your video card. If you want to be able to watch TV, like plug your cable TV system into your, into your PC system so you can watch TV, then you're probably going to want a video card that supports the video in feature.